Hello, everyone. I'm Andrew Tamayer. And I'm Sahar Zoni. Together, we will present you Generative AI, or Gen AI, an in for introduction to the wonders of artificial intelligence. We will be helped by our co worker, Ronnie Santos. At the end of this presentation, Ronnie will execute live examples of Gen AI on his web browser. Cool, eh? The word generative means something that can create or produce things. So when we talk about generative AI, we're talking about a type of AI that can create new things like stories, pictures, or even music. Let's, Let's dive, dive together, together into, into the world, world of Gen, Gen AI. Gen AI is fairly new. It all started in 1956 with artificial intelligence, the field of computer science that seeks to create intelligent machines that can replicate or exceed human intelligence. Then, in 1997, machine learning, or ML, came into the picture. ML is a subset of AI that enables machines to learn from existing data and improve upon that data to make decisions or predictions. Next, we have deep learning, which is a machine learning technique in which layers of neural networks are used to process data and make decisions. Which brings us now to generative AI, a model that can create new written visual and auditory content given prompts or existing data. Just for you to know, this Gen AI timeline you're seeing is a very simplified one. Here is a slide with the bigger picture. As you can see, everything started in the 50s with increasing funding for AI. Then, in the 90s, the explosion of internet, increased digitalization and globalization brought everything to a whole new level. Finally, some hardware advances, digital literacy, and commercial viability in the next decades created the foundation for today's Gen AI. We asked ChatGPT to explain Gen AI for a 10th grade student, and here's ChatGPT's answer. Generative AI is a type of artificial intelligence that can create new content, whether it's writing, images, or music, based on the vast amounts of data it's trained on. Think of it like a highly advanced computer program that's absorbed a huge library of human creativity and can now produce its own original content. It works by recognizing patterns and structures in the data it's seen, and then it uses that knowledge to generate new similar pieces. This is amazing, don't you think, Andrew? Indeed, Sahar. Now you might be wondering, what is ChatGPT? ChatGPT is like a virtual assistant powered by artificial intelligence. Developed by OpenAI, it uses a program called GPT, Generative Pre-Trained Transformer, to understand and generate text. But remember, it's not perfect. It's based on the information it was trained on, so sometimes its responses might not be completely accurate or up-to-date. Thanks for the thorough explanation, Sahar. Now, these are the pros and cons of Gen AI. Most of them are pretty straightforward. For time's sake, I will explain one positive aspect, and Andrew will go over one negative one. If you have questions about other pros and cons, please check the links at the end of this video. Natural language understanding. This means that generative AI models excel in understanding and generating human language. This allows more natural and contextually relevant interactions in chatbots, virtual assistants, and customer support systems. Thanks for your brilliant explanation, Sahar. I will try my best to be at least half as clear and informative as you were. Wish me luck. So, regarding ethical and bias outputs, generative models can inadvertently generate biased or politically incorrect content, reflecting the biases present in their training data. Ensuring ethical use and minimizing bias is a significant challenge. As one can conclude, Gen AI replicates the biases already present in society. Amazing job, Andrew. But I knew this already from the great and four webinars you host. Now moving on to the money side of things, according to McKinsey, Gen AI's impact on productivity could add trillions of dollars in value to the global economy. The combined value Gen AI can produce is up to $4.4 trillion. Wow, this is bigger than Germany's GDP, Sahar. Isn't this incredible? Very. This slide shows some of the modern day work challenges Gen AI could address. Did you know that 60% of a person's time at work is spent on work about work? Team disengagement is a top five driver for digital transformation. 60% of customers will switch brands after just one to two bad experiences. 
and that 211 is the average number of apps for a company with more than 2,000 employees. This is a lot of apps. Hopefully, Gen AI adoption could gradually help fix each one of these issues. This next slide shows that while Gen AI is starting to move beyond the hype, most organizations haven't moved to implementation or even started. On the bright side, most companies have plenty of time to catch up. This pie shows the results of a survey applied by VentureBeat, a US-based technology website. I see a great Gen AI time ahead for organizations everywhere. What do you think, Andrew? I agree with you, Sahar. Now you might be asking yourself, what can I do with Gen AI now? We have some good answers for you. If you are one of the big three, Google, Microsoft, or Amazon, you can continue investing heavily in AI and making your top shareholders even richer. If you are the government, you can focus on policy writing and guidelines. If you are an investor with a deep pocket, you can pay a team to create the fingers crossed next big AI thing. If you are a big company, you can invest in R&D on custom app building, integration, data mining, etc. If you are a small business, you can test and use off-the-shelf quote free tools and subscribe if really needed. If you are a team member, try to make the most out of off-the-shelf tools, starting with the quote free ones built into some of the tools already in use. Great job condensing such a massive and complex topic, Andrew. Now Sahara and I will hand it over to Ronnie, who will show some examples of how to use Gen AI to web search, brainstorm, summarize, and create drafts. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation. Thanks everyone for your time. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Andrew. It was a pleasure presenting this with you. Thanks, Zahar and Andrew, for this amazing Gen AI presentation. Hello, everyone. I'm Ronnie. I will show you some Gen AI examples applicable to the work of professionals trying to be strategic and make the most out of their time and resources. I will use three tools Microsoft Copilot, Bing Chat, and ChatGPT. So let's get started. Copilot is a chatbot developed by Microsoft. It can help you quickly compose or edit text, generate summaries, drafts, etc. I'll ask Microsoft Copilot to draft an email to my social services manager about the potential benefits of using generative AI at five bullet points in our support of new immigrants in Canada. Now, let's see how Copilot can help me. As you can see, Copilot followed my instructions and added a strong introduction to the subject. Plus five bullet points that included relevant topics. Improvement of language translation, faster task processing time, data analyzes accuracy, better resource allocation, and customer experience. What do you think of the result? At this point, you can copy this text inside an email draft, revise it, and adjust it to your liking. Now let's take a look at Microsoft Bing Chat. Microsoft Bing Chat is an AI-powered assistant. You can use it to browse the web, ask both simple and complex questions, research, summarize content, and much more. This is my request to Bing Chat. We plan to host a hybrid, in-person and online conference for 1,000 attendees. Please play the corporate event organizer consultant role and let me know what I need regarding infrastructure, resource, staff, etc. In addition, which are the top 10 event management companies in Canada. Finally, please create a table with names, websites, city and provinces of the companies you listed above. Remember, the more specific you are with your request, the better the results. So let's see what it comes up with. Impressive. Bing Chat is giving us suggestion for infrastructure, tech resources, staff, catering for the in-person attendees, and a reminder to advertise the event. Bing Chat created a table just as we have asked. And it also let us access an Excel sheet with this information to make our life much easier. Excellent. You and I know what you would get with old Google search by trying the same request there. Yes, a jumbled list of company links mixed with advertising. What do you think about Bing Chat? Are you ready to try it yourself? I hope so. 
With Bing Chat, you save time and effort and can strategize because a big chunk of the work was done by the tool already. And you can build on your Bing Chat search by asking additional questions and challenging the information produced by the chatbot. Now, I will ask Bing Chat to help me with an extremely time-consuming routine. Here's my request. Please list 10 bullet point highlights from this 20,000 words Statistics Canada report. Bing Chat summarized this massive report into 10 bullet points and also brought other suggestion if I want to further my research. What a time saver. Now I have an idea of what the report is about and can decide if this is the report I will be further researching in my project. Let's move on to our next tool, the Chat GPT. Chat GPT is a chatbot developed by OpenAI. You can use it to generate ideas, compose and rephrase text, write computer code, summarize data, explain complex topics, etc. I want ChatGPT to read a 2023 IRCC report. Then play the specialist role and quickly list how Canadians can benefit from IEHPs. As we wait for ChatGPT to generate its answer, I want to let you know that this report has over 19,000 words. So these five bullets could help you get a sense of how IRCC is trying to drive the conversation around IEHPs. Topics such as labor shortages, healthcare service quality, aging population, linguistic diversity in healthcare, and economic contribution have been part of daily conversation with anyone working with IEHB. It also points you to where the information is coming from. You can continue to ask question if you feel it has not given you enough information. What do you think of the tools we have seen so far? Do you think they can help your daily routine? If you think it can, there's more. Let's continue. In this next example, I want ChatGPT to create a horizontal bar chart for me. Remember, the more information and directions you give to the chatbot, the more accurate its answers will be. So I am feeding the chatbot with numbers. Title, the years I wanted to extract data from the colors, and some other information I find relevant for this chart. Let's see what it can do. As you can see, it followed every instruction I have given it. Title, numbers, the years the data was extract, the colors, and etc. This chart would look great in a presentation. So what do you think? I find it very interesting. Talking about adding this chart to a presentation, what about having some fun with the chatbot? Let's ask it to create a pop art painting of Canada's parliament with vibrant colors. That's something. I really like the blue and green ceiling and the color mix. What do you think? I hope these examples helped you better understand Gen AI and see how you can benefit from it in your daily work. This N4 network link lists some Gen AI resources and training suggestions to increase your knowledge of this technology. Check it out. This is the end of this presentation. Thanks for your time.